Welcome to the latest video. Um, this is episode one and this will be issue one and two. Um, these are both rebuilds and this will be the propeller blades and spinner nose cone followed by the motor and gears for the spinner. For those who fought in the Battle of Britain, it was a battle for survival. For the free world, it was a breathless moment in history. For failure would have plunged mankind into a new dark age. Never have so many owed so much to so few. So issue one is the propeller blades and spinner nose cone. We have eight parts beginning with 01, propeller blades times three, 02 spinner nose cone, 03 propeller mount inner part, 04 propeller mount outer part with recessed screw hole, 05 assembly template, 06 propeller cog times three, 07 central cog and 08 2 by 2.3 by 6 millimeter PB screws and what that means is one is spare we do receive two though before I start work on any build I do like to try and organize my parts now harsh yet they do arrange things in a nice little blister pack I've, I've cut all the packaging that I don't need away um, so obviously you get left with something like this which this is just going to go in the bin um, and then what I've done is I've gone through the parts beforehand and I've labeled all the parts um, and I've, I've got myself a little sharpie pen and I've just written on the packaging so there we see we've got part one part five part eight which is the screws part two three four um, there's five again three sixes and a seven and I'll pop that up there and then I'll use this as my working area and then hopefully up there will be the instructions as they become relevant. Okay, so let's begin stage one. We need part 105, which is the assembly template. Now this is only plastic, but it doesn't need to be anything else. And as you can see, it's specially shaped so that we can uh, assemble the propeller. Um, the next part we'll need is 103, which you see there I've labeled. And if I compare this to four, you see that this has got a flat piece on it. And this one has got a recessed piece. So piece number three, and this goes into the middle any which way you want. It will work whichever way you want. I'm just gonna move the light. Um, unfortunately, it means you're gonna get light bound, so I do apologize. Um, so that goes into there like so. So we need to make sure that the mount fits snugly into the recess in the center of the template, which you can see there it does. So the next stage is uh, we need to get the central cog, which is this one. Now note there are four cogs. There's three small ones and one large one. The central cog is number seven. And you see there it's got teeth on one side and flat on the other side. We must make sure those teeth go up. Now you'll see a little peg in the middle of the uh, of piece three and that goes in like that and so far all of the pieces have been plastic I believe it's ABS plastic so the next stage is to take one of the propeller cogs uh, which is this one and the propeller uh, which is piece number one now this is metal it's actually quite weighty beautiful paintwork really really happy with that now you'll see that there's a little tab there see that tab sticking out and if I turn it that way the tab disappears and there it is again and then this cog has a little line in it a little cut out so that tells us that that tab goes in like that and we push that in as far as it'll go and it won't cover all of the tab as you can see but it covers enough so it doesn't move and then the next stage is to repeat that process with all of the cogs okay and there you see we have three propellers so what we now need to do is to pop these on to I'll just move this out of the way so we need to move this onto the assembly jig now 
what you may notice I might just move my light in a bit right there's a little flat bit there let me get a screwdriver just where the screwdriver is now there's a little flat piece um, this piece looks like a flat piece but this is a slightly flat recessed piece when you pop the propeller in you can actually get the rest of that tab into that recess and you'll see there's a little cut out there that's for the end of the peg and you rest that on there like so and obviously you'll do that on the jig but I was just showing you there you go and that's that's in perfectly that's when you know you've got it incorrectly so then you repeat the process this goes in you line the peg on and then you just make sure that tab is level in that little recess like so and that one doesn't there we go so if you were to pop it in upside down you see that it's not sticking on the tab but you'll also notice that these propeller blades they have a bit of a shape to them they're not absolutely symmetrical so you need the tab going basically the tabs are going to point anti-clockwise so place the peg on there and there we go so we just make sure I don't like that tab there that tabs in fine I think that one's in fine give them hold down the other two propellers give them a little wiggle see if there's any resistance if there is resistance then you can assume that the uh, the cogs have all lined up correctly so there we go so I'm happy with that so on to the next stage and we need to place in piece number four now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to place that in then I'm going to hold this very very tight like that and then we can just test that it works and there you go we can see that works perfectly so there's a little bit of a click that suggests to me that it's not lined up properly there we go now obviously you need to hold this down really really tight as though it's screwed in if you if you loosen your grip the cogs are going to slip so I think that's fine so still holding that really really tight I'm going to pop the screw into there like so let's do it properly shall we there we go and then I'm going to screw that in gently and then right I get a stop there normally when I say you, when you screw into plastic I say screw until it stops but in this particular case because I want to make sure this stays on tight I'm just going to give it an extra quarter of a turn not too much that you're going to damage the plastic there you go just to make sure that screw is in tight and then we'll test the piece look at that look at that color me happy so when we're finished what we can do is we can use this template to store uh, the actual propeller on um, we won't I don't think we'll need this template anymore but I will keep hold of it just in case and then that leaves us with one spare piece which is piece number I've forgotten the number it's piece number two the spinner nose cone this isn't needed in this issue so we'll just pop that over there and then we can pop that in a nice safe area where we, we uh, store our parts and that also leaves us with one spare screw now I personally like to keep my screws just in case um, but you can do what you like with it and obviously this container can now be thrown away um, but you can clearly see how I've labeled all of the parts ready for um, for assembly um, so yeah that's issue one complete and um, I've got to say I'm really happy with the parts This issue contains seven different parts. We have one and two is the motor housings, three is the propeller gear set, four is the motor, five is the lower fuselage frame, 
Uh, six are PB2 by four millimeter screws, and seven is the four two by four millimeter PM screws. Um, and you get three PB screws and four PM screws, with one of each being spare. All parts are plastic, um, and I think they're suitable to be plastic, uh, with the exception, obviously, of the uh, part three, the propeller gear set, which is a mixture of metal and plastic and the motor which is a mixture of um, plastic and metal with with a wire on it so I need to stress this is a rebuild um, for the reason being that one of the parts I don't actually have because it's already been fitted to a later issue which I don't want to go into too much uh, you will discover that in a later issue um, so I've laid my parts out uh, one two three four Five I don't have because I've just shown you. Six and seven, I've already put them away in convenient pots. Um, so obviously we'll use those when we come to it. So stage one, we've actually already completed in the previous issue by placing the nose cone on top of the propellers. And then we'll go on to stage two, which is just make sure that it is in there snugly. Um, it needs to be the correct way round. And what you'll notice is that there's a little lug on one of the propellers not all of them just the one and that lines up you'll see there there's three little ridges one two and the third one's got a little cut out you just need to make sure that goes into there and if you try and move it it's a lot snugger than if you put it in incorrectly it's just not quite feeling right so that lug into there like that so on to stage three and we will need part seven and it doesn't look like it needs to go on any particular way so long as you get those three holes lined up with those three holes there so on it goes like that and that is a really nice fit so we will also need uh, four pm uh, three three pm screws sorry so I don't advise just chucking them on the table like this um, but you know me I do my own thing so three screws what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop whoops what is it she said in pretty woman slippery little suckers so I'm just gonna put one in and I'm only gonna give it a couple of turns just enough to bite so that's now not gonna fall out then we'll pop the next one in just a couple of turns there we go and then we'll get the third and I think I'll put this down I would actually advise having a cloth I've got a piece of paper down but if you put a cloth down it, it will protect against scratches right so I've got those in loosely I'm just checking the fit obviously this propeller is going to be loose because it's not in firmly just give the propellers a slight turn just to make sure they're working as they should I wouldn't play with this too much because we do know the cogs are only plastic the whole reason for me doing a rebuild is because my th cogs actually threaded so I had to remove them unfortunately they threaded round about issue 10 so I had so many parts to remove which is the whole reason these videos are existing because I used it as an opportunity so just doing the three screws in and although we are screwing into metal I'm not flying into too hard and if anybody ever used to watch my live Rootmaster show you will probably know about the advice of using uh, oil for the screws and I would strongly recommend oil or, or if you don't have oil washing up liquid washing up liquid is very good but oil is better and I think it's fair to say everyone has washing up liquid so there we go they're in nice and tight Now this seems a lot tighter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off these screws just about half a turn and this might be the reason why my last one broke 
Oh, look at that. No, that's gone. Right. So, this is the second one I've built. I'd be interested to know in the comments, did anyone else have the same issue? Did I screw this too tight? I have just heard one slip. Yeah, that's working a lot better now. Yes, so I would suggest perhaps, yeah, that one's gone. So I've now got the same problem I had before. So maybe I just wanna half a turn tighter there. I think this is a little bit like a 3D printer leveling the bed. Oh, that's much better, yeah. So, yeah, I would suggest not playing with these propellers too much. So there we go, that's that done. So, this is all solid. This is all connected apart from this little sleeve there. So, on to stage four. We need to take part number two. And what we need to do, these have got two brass collars there. What we need to do is we need to push those as far apart as they will go. And what we want to do is get this piece there in between the collars. So when we do that, you see the two collars are actually sitting outside of the part. Uh, my camera, unfortunately, I'm using a manual focus one, which for most of the time works really, really well. But in this instance, it is a little bit fiddly. But yeah, in this instance, it's not the best camera to use. So let me just bring that, there we go. So once it's in, if you can keep it in, you can see that the two brass bits are actually sitting outside of the plastic. So I'm gonna put my finger there. Now what I like, or what I want to do here is I want to just quickly jump to stage seven, which will be to place this piece on. And I just want to do a dry fit, and that fits perfectly, so I'm happy with that. So we'll take that back off. So then we'll jump on to stage five, and we take the motor, piece number four, and also stage number six is to fit that. Now, I struggled with this last time, but as you can see this time, it's gone in absolutely fine. Now, also on my stage, uh, on this one of on my first build, I thought this was all gonna get in the way. So I actually trimmed away at it. Do not do that. Um, it makes the cable very, very loose. Um, I didn't worry about it at the time because I know how to solder. But obviously life, now that I'm doing a rebuild, I've got this opportunity. I'm not going to remove that it does help protect the wire um, so on to stage seven again and this time we can place this back on and we can see there that that's fitting lovely so this will take a total of two screws apart oh there's the second screw so we want two PB two by four millimeter screws and I've learned my lesson from last time so I will keep the screw pot as far away as possible. Now, because I'm keeping my screws um, from other issues, I've got some silver ones there. So 206, I can see from the magazine these are black and it makes sense that these are black because we're screwing them into a black piece. So I'm not gonna use the silver screws so excuse me one sec and i'm actually going to even go one better and i'm going to put the lid on the pot because that is the sensible thing to do and my phone has just gone off and it always goes off when i'm videoing so right so remember we're screwing this into plastic so we don't want to go too hard now i'm just going to screw one in just loosely that will mean that i can then let go if I want to so and I if you've got a magnetized screwdriver it's always best I think to pop the screw onto the screwdriver it just gives you extra hands free so that looks like it's fitting fine so I've got a little bit of a gap there and that's because I've not screwed this in fully so I'll give that a couple of turns 
and then I'll go back to the second screw I'll give that a couple of screws plus a couple more so it's like a little race one screws in the lead then the other screws in the lead and then back to the first one back to the second one right there we go no there's no gaps there that is a perfect fit now I don't have my um, power supply with me but you could actually test that now and what I would recommend doing is holding it there because you remember where the blades are connect this up to your power supply and to always turn it on low um, we don't know what voltage that motor is going to take so if you banged in there 50 volts um, it would probably spin very fast for about a second um, probably fast enough to slice your finger off um, so just to, you just need enough power supply just to make it move just to make sure it works um, but in the meantime I'm looking at the two cogs when I move this propeller I can see that the motor cog is turning so therefore we can assume that when the motor turns the propeller will turn um, but yeah, no, that's it. I'm happy with that and I'm going to what I might suggest here is Just raise this up a little bit um, But whatever you want you want to be careful if you start putting these down Onto surfaces you will just wear away just the edge I don't know if you remember as a kid and we used to throw our motor uh, our bikes up against walls and what would happen over time um, the that used to get the plastic handlebar grips and it would eventually wear through and then you'd end up with a hole because where, where the handlebar was cut through that's what you're going to get here you can see there that keep placing it on the ground it will just wear that away so um, on to the finished parts what they look like now this is going to look very slightly different from the magazine this part will look the same except that this wire isn't showing on the magazine um, and it will show that this is piece number five um, so if you can imagine only that like I say this is a rebuild this part had already been done um, and it says gears and a motor have been fitted to the spinner complete with the propellers part five will be fitted in a future issue store the parts carefully until needed so I will give you a bit of a sneak peek this is quite obviously going to go on like that um, now there are other pieces to build up around this um, so you'll have uh, I believe you'll have a piece going there um, but yeah it, all those that like to have a little play um, this is what it looks like if you haven't got issue three well this is what it looks like if you've got this issue um, so yeah that's it guys um, really appreciate you watching my videos um, next week will be um, issues three and four um, they are both um, do you know I can't remember what they are at the moment but let's have a look at, at the uh, the uh, the advertising material for it and then I will end the show. So thank you very much for watching. Now this will be a rebuild. So you may see parts throughout the next five videos. That's too long. Welcome to the latest. Uh... Before I begin any bit. Uh this it doesn't matter which way round it goes on so long as <coughs> there we go right so I'm going to pretend this bit never existed this is all solid this is all connected apart from this little sleeve there so obviously once there is oops that's why you put lids on screws <laughs> <laughs> 